when do I think about hiring someone? I, I would ask yourself, how many hours are you working? Are you happy? Are you miserable? Are you working 100 hours a week? And are you feel like you're killing yourself and you have no time for anything that you love to do outside of work? I mean, let's be honest, when you build a company, it's a grind, right? And no one can tell you, I'm only going to work 40 hours a week. That's just not possible, right? Especially when you're starting out. So I think once you realize what your you know, your potential issues are in your business and where things that you love doing and things you don't love doing. Like if you remember, Chris, we filled out the task responsibility worksheet. We monetize it at a $10 and a thousand dollar activity. And if it's a bunch of $10 an hour activities, I should be outsourcing those or having someone else do it. And I can create a rule based upon those activities as part of my job description for that employee. And then I would say, you know, again, the other thing that I think comes into play with that is just making sure that you know, that person that you're bringing on, like it's not a, a 30000 or 40000 or $50,000 investment all up front. You're paying for that person, you know, every, either every other week, every week, every, you know, month, however you do your payroll. And if someone's not consistently performing, again, it's our job to coach and document and make sure that we're following a process, but you may only need to keep that person for three months. You know, if somebody is performing, then you're getting your value. They're going to be worth their weight in gold, or they're going to be worth at least two to three X or what you're paying somebody. So I think sometimes we get it in our head, oh, I'm going to have to pay this person $50,000. Well, to me, that's kind of crap. At the end of the day, if they're not performing, you're not going to keep your underperforming employees, right? right. But it's our job to make sure we communicate and because people either live up or live down to expectations, right? That's a Scott Hannes phrase. You can feel free to use it. Just give me a little credit. They either live up or live down to expectations. And so at the end of the day, if we don't, again, give them their clear lane, we don't give them job duties, tasks, we don't write their job description. We don't empower them. And we don't give them the resources and tools to be successful in the training. That's on us. We failed them as their leader all day long. So it's really important that we do that. And if we've done that, again, they should be able to you know, make sure that they're making an impact in our business. Yeah. Yeah. I agree 100%. So let's say we've hired that person. Mm-hmm. We, we've decided, man, I'm working 80 hour weeks. I'm tapped out in my resources. I know I can grow, but I can't grow because I have no more time available for me. Whether it's a small business with just one person that started a business or there's 20, if that person's feeling that way, then a hire needs to happen. So we made the decision to make the hire. Mm -hmm. Where in the world do we find these applicants? Mm -hmm. How do we solicit for these? That's the $10,000 question everybody wants to know. So to me, it's not a one-phased approach anymore. Like in the past, you can put it on Indeed and you probably get a ton of resumes and, and candidates that apply. To me, it's, you know, you hear the saying, and this is another Scott Hannes quote, uh, always be recruiting. Just like you hear always be closing, always be selling, always be, you know, closing, always be recruiting and sharing the information. So to me, it's a multifaceted approach. So you can post your jobs and all the job boards that you want. Indeed, Wise Hire, LinkedIn, you can post stuff on, you can post stuff on Facebook, you can do a Facebook jobs page. That's just one step. The other big thing is I like to ask people for referrals. I like to share with my network, even on social media. Social media is such a powerful tool. There's a lot of negative things with social media, but there's a lot of positive things. And one of those is going on doing like this Facebook Live, you know, or do like an Instagram story or a reel and share with what everybody, hey, we're growing, we're expanding. We're looking to, you know, add on another team member. Who do you know that we should be talking to? Send them our way. So I think you have to do that approach. I think you have to do the employee referral approach. I think you have to, you know, depending on the role or the position, Chris, you can go and you can talk to like different trade schools. If it's a, you know, more of a trade position, Mm -hmm. you can get in. There's a website called Handshake. Uh, Handshake is where a lot of college and universities use. You have to get set up as a user. It's a little bit of a pain. It doesn't always work the best, but Handshake's another approach where you could talk to kids that are in college that are going to be graduating soon whether you're looking for an intern, whether you're looking for a full-time person, maybe right out of college that you can groom and kind of mold into your company. So that's another place. You, know, you could use a recruiter, someone like ourselves, you know, help you find the talent. Like we use for our recruiting, we use a lot of those same methods, but then we have resume databases that we pay for. We do a lot of cold calling. And let's say you own a company like GM, General Motors, and we want to go source somebody who's got experience and talent working in the automotive industry. I may call people that work at Ford, right? And I'll pick up the phone. I'll start cold calling people, talking about what my company's all about. What is the opportunity? Are they happy? Are they interested in learning more? 
So sometimes we got to get out of our comfort zone. Nobody likes doing that, but that's another way to potentially find talent. Chris, it's been crazy. Like going to a restaurant down in Florida, I remember talking to a waiter at Outback Steakhouse. The person was working three jobs, having a hard time paying their bills, didn't have health insurance. They were really, really good at what they did. They provided excellent service. They were really good at communicating. I think they had 10 or 11 tables the night that I was there. And so I asked the person, I said, are you happy here? I know not really. It's just a way to pay, you know, pay the bills. And I said, why don't you come see me tomorrow? I'm going to be down, you know, like two miles down the road. I'm an HR executive for this company. And why don't we do an interview and see if you might want to make a change? So I think sometimes it's just simple as that, having a conversation, finding out what's there. You could do, again, besides the school groups, sometimes there's local church groups you can reach out to that maybe run employment, you know, groups or boards where you can ask people if they're looking for jobs. It really is just about connecting and telling people what you're looking for. The Indeed and the Wise Hire and the LinkedIn, those are really good ways. You know, but again, you can't just do one thing anymore. You really have to share that. And really when you're sharing those things, Chris, you got to talk about your culture. Like I know at Absolute that you and Christian, you guys have an awesome culture. You have great people that work for you. You know, you got to share those things. You got to talk about what is your culture all about? What makes you guys different? You guys do a great job of that on Facebook. Like I've seen you guys just went out for like a team lunch. That was really cool. You got to share those things so people know, right? Because people are attracted. Like they don't want to go work, you know, for a horrible place that has a poor work environment. So you got to share what you're doing. You got to give yourself some, give yourself some credit, you know? And a lot of small business owners don't do that or they don't think they have the time to do it. But that's a big draw and attraction for people. You know, you've heard the saying, people don't quit their jobs, they quit their boss, right? I would say the same thing for their environment. How are they treated? Again, like with your company, I know, Chris, because we did it, but we put together, there's like a a pay for skill performance program where someone gets hired in here, they have an opportunity to move to here and then here, and they're making more money. People want opportunities to grow. Like People don't want to be stuck in a $12 an hour job the rest of their life. At least I wouldn't want to. And maybe there are people out there that do, but understanding that I think is a really important part. And then, you know, you just have to be it's constantly recruiting. Again, I don't care what position it is, what industry. Some are easier to fill than others right now, but you have to constantly be recruiting. 